amazing movie. It was, it's oh, very chilling. Um, it's a movie that you made about about Edgar mm -hmm. and and some other things. How do you two see it sitting here together? How do you look at the movie? I'll let uh, you go first. <laughs> it's um, it's kind of weird seeing yourself on TV. No, nah, it's. I don't know. It's, it's you know, it's funny because I met Edgar after covering the drug war for a long time. I'm originally a, a still photographer, predominantly a war photographer, if you will. And I was covering Mexico's war on drugs. Um, and one day I woke up in Tijuana and shot, photographed two murder scenes. And at night I went, I crossed the border, I went to Riverside about an hour, give or take away. And I saw Edgar for the first time in Bucanas, and there he was with a gun, with a big fake joint, with a big crowd, and they were all singing <laughs> Con Cuerno de Chivo and all these songs. And I was like, how could they celebrate this? What's going on here? And I, I, I was actually quite pissed, and I, I, I was revolted. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and, I, and I understood that this is exactly what I want to look into, because people kept telling me how, you know, from my pictures, how this is just thugs killing thugs, and this is this, and this policy, and this cartel. But I saw kids in Riverside wanting to be something I couldn't believe, and I thought that was interesting. I thought that was different, and I wanted to really dive into that. And I think that's what the movie does. It, it gives you a front seat not only to the drug war like never seen before it was really unprecedented access, but also to what it does on a bigger picture to us, what it does to a Latino youth, what it does to our hearts and mind, if you will. Now, you're, you're a star of this, of this genre, uh, Edgar. Um, the film sort of shows how people come to you, how these, uh, uh, how these cartel people come to you and ask for songs. Can you explain how this music started and how, how it is fueled? Not necessarily everybody's from the cartel. It, it, there's, there's just, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of young people, not only young people, all, all sorts of people in, in, in this in, in regional Mexican music that they just want to feel good for those two, three minutes that the song is, maybe hear their name there and, 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 and that song. And some of those people have some interesting stories. Some of them might be what you call a cartel member. Some of them might be a hardworking florist or hardworking uh, construction worker and he just likes corridos and he wants to he gets a little bit of extra money he says I want to put my life on a CD you know it's just it's it's something that goes all the way around and that's why me I'm used to just a three four minute interview and meeting show was something different because I kind of gave everybody the opportunity to like really you know see and at the same time I in the beginning I was a little skeptical I was a little jittery Scared about it. my camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, I guess, it, it was it was a great experience. It was, and um, and I guess that's what life is all about. You just gotta, you just gotta go learning as you go, as, as you live. You live and learn. And, 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 you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to be better this year than how, than how where I was last year. So that's, that's the way it goes. Speaking of giving interviews, you took your camera to some amazing places in pretty dangerous situations at times. How do you, how do you get in there? What is, what is your technique? <laughs> yeah, sure. How do you um, get in there? <laughs> well, I got into him by, by trust. You know, as characters and filmmaking, you, you got to spend the time. You got to show that you're different. Um, and I come from a world that, uh, of conflict photography. And this was a little bit of a different story because... You know, sometimes you go to wars. I've covered Afghanistan, I've covered different wars. And you embed with a group of people, whether you like their policy or not, or what they're about, you trust them. Here it was a little bit different, like who to trust, what's going on, is a very tricky subject to actually cover. Um, so on one hand, we gave it a lot of time. On the other hand, you know, we were really careful. We did draw lines in the sand. You know, Edgar has lines in the sand. He will write for traffickers who order a song but he will know the rules of that, then he will approve the words, and he will go back and forth, and he will know what not to do. And I think it's to a degree the same with this film. We did go in really wanting to take you with this real decision. We're not gonna just talk to experts, we're gonna take you in there. But we also understood what we can't do. You know, There's certain stuff we couldn't investigate. There's certain stuff we, we saw so much more than we were able to capture, and so it was really putting a lot of time and a lot of energy into it, but also saying, okay, this is a line I can't cross because my safety is meant. 
we, this, this movie is about, partly is about this music that glorifies violence, and, and then it's, it's gone into the mainstream. Um, that is, it, is, it is extolling violence and drug use. Where do we go from here? I mean, what does that do to the culture if, if this becomes mainstream? It's not what that it does to the culture. What's the reality creates the culture? It's the other way around. I mean, culture influences back, and that's the mirror maybe I put in front of Edgar and people who love this music. But you got to understand, if there is no reality, there is no culture. The, the, he is bouncing off a reality that he sees. These kids celebrating something. Yeah. They're not just celebrating something out of the blue. They're celebrating a reality that our policy has failed to stop for years. And we keep saying the Mexico drug war. Why? That sounds far. Uh, 40, 50 billion dollar a year come from our demand for drugs. The guns that are used come from the U.S. So, you know, if we really want to change this, we saw Mexico go ahead and ban some of this music in some places. So what? We live in a world that they'll just inflame it. If we really want to change, let's talk about changing the policy, because I don't think you can hang the messenger completely here, is it? No, I don't think, I, I, don't, I, don't, uh, I don't mean to go there. A, a lot of people do. A lot of people go into this place where, well, I wish Edgar didn't sing this, and what, are, what is he doing to this kid? And sure, the, the, the reality we live in culturally yeah, affects everybody. Yeah, it's not really glorifying. It's more describing a scene. It's describing what's going on. Well, this is obviously... This whole phenomenon, I mean, the whole drug war in Mexico is, is partly due to American drug policy. And, it's, and this, this war on, 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 on cartels in, 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 in Mexico, it, it, the, the dates of your murders, the statistics, that, can, you, can you give those statistics and how they relate? I mean, if you looked at Juarez, uh, the, every year since 08 to, to 210, you saw this huge rise. It went for, I don't remember the complete exact number as I remember, but it went from 300 and something murders in 208 to over 3,600, 3, I believe, in 210. So you're seeing this huge increase when there's a turf war. And, you know, this is not an acceptable, this is a s relatively small city that was suffering from an average of almost 10 murders a day at this point. And, it's right there, you know, I flew into El Paso, which at that time, ironically, is the safest city on the U.S. Walked, literally walked across the border and hit the, one of the most dangerous <coughs> cities in the world. And it is something that is controlled now by our policies, you know. This is not an ideological war. This is not a war about, it's an opportunity and, and, uh, of money that's always been there, and we kind of try to tuck it away and deny it. But really, nothing's done to stop it. And I think that's what you see through a CSI worker picking up the bodies and how he may love his town, he may not be corrupt, everything you suspect, but he's just not able to do anything. And to me, Edgar, in the same way, is, is a little bit of a product of this reality. He's singing about something that this youth wants to know about because it's constantly happening because we failed to change it as a bigger we as, a, as countries, as the US, as Mexico. So we have to change to change the situation? Well, there's many ways to start changing the situation. One of them is, first of all, to be aware that the situation and not tuck it away. You could talk about education. You could talk about legalization of drugs. You could talk about, does shutting off the border really stop drugs or is it just killing them and stopping the immigration? It's a complex issue. There's not a one, two, three solution, but one thing is sure, just kind of tucking it away and saying, oh, how could these guys sing about this and this Mexicans, look at them, they're parting to these songs. What are we doing? If we don't change the reality, I think this culture is gonna exist. If we start changing it, I think we'll see Edgar sing about other things. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much.